I want to talk about the moon. It's already mad late, so I just want to come on, uh, talk about the moon real quick, and then, you know, upload this on IG, y'all, but I just want to get a little Q&A at the end if y'all have any questions, so I try to go live so I don't have to make videos and post to YouTube so we can get some interaction going. Code, and another one, hold. You know how that go. You know how that go. I just want a millions. I just want a millions. Stack this cash. Hey, I should get, I should get, yeah, pre. I was about to say I should get you to come roll with all your Virgo, Virgo energy. I was just about to say I need a Virgo to roll my spliff up. Virgo gonna roll the spliff. Nice, tight. Not gonna be loose. Look, look, that's how you roll up. That's how you roll up in five seconds, man. You can see the experience in this. <laughs> you can see the experience in the roll up. Alright. Alright. Figured that. Baby Pepper Jack. Maybe I'm balling like German Jack. Mm -mm 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 mm 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 so crack to make my pop back. Yeah, I be butchering lyrics, y'all. For an air sign, I be butchering lyrics to songs like. <laughs> Alright, y'all, just gonna fill it up, fill it up a little bit more, fill it up a little bit more. Facts, I'm the same way. Facts, facts, facts. Oh, yes, I'd roll one. I'd roll one for you. Let's just. Let's just wish this corona goes and I come there to meet you. Find me some work in films there. AD or DLP. Oh, that's nothing, man. That's nothing, man. we gonna. You talking about film? Shit, we. Create some content for the tube. <laughs> Come to America and start your YouTube journey. We could do it like that. We could definitely do it like that. I just want a million. Stack this cash. I'm a Libra too. Okay, Libra gang. All right. Royal Harlem. We got a we got a Harlem native in here. We got a Harlem native tapped in. I'm from the Bronx. Oh yes, we actually can. Right, right. That's if I make it to India first. But all right, yeah, I just wanna, I just wanna talk about the, uh, the moon and Leo real quick. Now, whenever we talk about the, something about to get started, my lighter. Hold on, y'all. Alright. Oh yeah, yeah. We definitely we definitely New York heavy in here. We definitely New York heavy in here. So alright, yeah. When we talk about um when we talk about the moon transits, alright, like we have to understand why it's so significant when we say, oh, the moon is in this sign, the moon is in that sign. Alright? Because whenever we have a new moon, this is like a period of of you know this is a time period where the universe is allowing us to bring in new energies, new people and places and things into our life. All right. So when it's a new moon, you want to make sure you're detached. 
I'm gonna have my back pieces in. You wanna make sure you're detached from things that you don't wanna bring into your new world, your new book, your new um, your new movie, all right? So that's very important to keep in mind when we talk about the new moons, okay? So this is why if you're going through catastrophic moments in your life, you know, something very transformative and traumatic, a, a really toxic, a really bad breakup, um, you lost your job, or whatever it is, when that new moon comes around, this is like the universe giving us a grace period to reset and get our shit together. But the thing is, is a lot of us don't understand these transits, so a lot of us, we, we harbor the same feel, uh, frequency, vibrations, feelings, thoughts that are negative, that are towards our detriment, that should have stayed in the past, and we bring that with the new moons. So when we're starting our new movie, our new cycles, we can't even let new things come into our life because of everything we, we left in the past, right? So when we talk about... um. So when we talk about the moon, right? New moon, all right? So we just had a new moon in Aries, right? We just had a new moon in Aries a couple of weeks ago when Air when the sun moved into Aries. Whenever it's a, whenever we have a new moon, the moon is going to conjunct the sun. Whenever we have a full moon, the moon is going to be opposite, all right? So that's very that's you guys may have not even actually noticed that. All right? So whenever we have a new moon, it's going to be with the with the sun. And it's going to be with the sun that just moved into a new sign. Whenever we have a full moon, it's gonna be with uh, it's gonna be opposite. So right now the sun is in um, Aries. We have a full moon coming up in Libra very soon. All right. So back to the new moon. So we have a new moon. You got your sage. You got your candles. You got your intentions. You got your rituals you want to place. You got you got your crystals outside. Getting some moonlight. Getting cleansed. Right. You got all that stuff going on. We know we want to. We know we don't want to bring old past vibrations and things that we don't want to bring um, into our new movie, our new uh, our new book or whatever. We don't want to bring none of them energies into this new chap, this new book when when the moon goes, when it turns into a new moon. Because we want to be able to keep opportunities for new things in life. Like I said before, we can't have the new things come in if we still detach to the people, places, and things that we know ain't the best for us. So... For example, just like just uh, the other week, we had a new moon in Aries. Sun in Aries, new moon in Aries. Now, new moon, first chapter of the book. So in this chapter of the book, this is the intro. You plant your seeds. You plant. You set your intentions. You you all the shit that you ain't want in your last movie. This is the time to realize, like, yeah, I I gotta have a new game plan. All right. So boom. Now, moon moves into Taurus. When the moon moves into Taurus, this is valuing the seed that I planted in the first house. Valuing the seed that I planted in Aries, all right? Um, seeing what resources I have to uh, make this seed grow, all right? But basically, I'm seeing what seeds I'm going to plant, all right, based off the intentions that I set in, the, in, in Aries. Then we move into Gemini. It's being relatable and communicate. And we're talking about the moon's transits, all right? So the moon was in the first house. And we know the moon is what we react and respond to. So whatever sign the moon is in, this is the energy you like. Okay, the moon is in Scorpio. Let me move a little bit behind the scenes. All right. Let me let me uh let me deal with my own emotions before I push them out. Okay. Let me be a little more fixed in the way I feel as far as as far as not being too relatable to everybody else's feelings, emotions right now. Like, you know, oh, the moon is in Libra. All right, let me be more relatable today. All right, let me try to value and and value the input of others today. The more you do that, the more you're going to, the more you're going to see uh, how you, how you ride the wave of the day better. All right, just by putting in a little bit of energy of that moon sign into your day. Okay, so every, once it's a new moon, Every sign that moon moves into, that's a new chapter of the book. This is a new scene of the movie. All the way to the moon gets right back to the sun. And it's a new moon. All right. So with this full moon in Libra, once again, once it, once the moon gets into Libra, we're going to have to be reacting and responding to how we relate to others how we balance everything that we've been through on our spiritual travels from the from the new moon and then on top of that you know um when we talk about the full moon you know it's like basically like a glass all right and it's when when there's a full moon the glass is full so even though the moon represents the energies that we should be reacting and responding to when the moon is when the glass is full 
you don't want to react too much, aka tip the glass over. This is why a lot of crazy shit happens during full moons, because people put in too much energy into that energy they wasn't supposed to, and then catastrophic moments happen. People get murdered, car crashes, and shit like that. So it's not about staying in your house during the full moon or anything. It's about knowing what sign, what energy the full moon is in, so you know specifically what energy not to overindulge in, what energy. If the moon is in Sagittarius, Sagittarius is a more spontaneous, um, you know, outgoing, spread its fire, spread its wings, I don't want to be contained type of energy. So you would know if there's a full moon in Sagittarius, let me not be so spontaneous and adventurous right now before I get my ass into some dumb shit. Let me not, you feel me? Let me not look at everything with meanings and reasonings to the point I miss certain technical things right in front of my face. All right. So that's how, that's like how you want to take it. You want to look at what sign is in. And then you want to go ahead and make sure that you're not overdoing it with the full moon energy. But once the full moon is done, now we're releasing until we get back to the new moon and it's a new movie. All right. So with the moon moving into Leo, it's trining the sun in Aries. All right. So with the moon trining the sun in Aries, this is basically a, a it's an opportunity. All right. So this is an opportunity for our actions. Uh, how we take initiative, all right, how we're starting things right now to complement, you know, how we're creatively expressing ourselves to complement, like the moon was just in cancer. So excuse me. Uh, so Yeah, so the moon was just in Cancer. So when the moon is in Cancer, we're more so reacting and responding to, you know, our heart space, what makes us emotionally comfortable, family matters, domestic issues and whatnot, okay? So once the moon moves into the fifth the fifth house space, aka, you know, where Leo, where the Leo constellation is at, now the intentions and everything we set in the first house, The intentions that we set in the first house, it's time for us to creatively express that. It's time for us to broadcast that light. It's time for us to put some of that shit on the stage and see how people are reacting to it. See, when you learn to work with the when you learn to work with the moon cycles, it gives you a great it gives you an indication of when to do things, when to broadcast certain things. All right. If you're a rapper, there's placements and transits when it's good to put music out. All right. If you're an artist or if you're a, you know, you're a business person, there's placements that, you know, there's transits when this is a good time for you to go ask your boss for a raise. All right. You got the, you got the moon transiting through an earth house, through the second house. Perfect time. Go ask your boss for a raise or, or go get that or go for that job opportunity or whatnot. You know, something dealing with career stability or whatnot. Okay. So this is how shit works. So when you start understanding the travels of the moon, it gives you an indication of what vibes to ride for the day, what influences to ride for the day. Now, not just the positive part, somebody needs a lighter. My ex texts me like, when you gonna come back, nigga? All right, all right, all right. So, um, uh, yeah, so there's certain transits for everything, all right? Like I said, the moon gives you a, it gives you a, it gives you a vibe, like a vibrational direction of how to carry out your day. Now, this is another reason why you gotta understand the moon. The moon is in Leo right now, right? So, Leo naturally squares all the other fixed signs. So, Leo squares Scorpio. Leo squares, um, 
um, Taurus and Leo squares uh, is opposite from Aquarius. So these are all more so harder aspects. Uh, oppositions and squares represent learning processes, all right? Six and trines represents gifts and opportunities. So you guys wanna look in your natal chart and look at your sex tiles and trines, see what see what planets are sex tiles and trined up, all right? And see what planets are squared up in opposition. And this gives you indication of what, what challenges and learning processes you're gonna have to go through in life, all right? And the trials and sex tiles, also, trines and sex tiles show you where your gifts and opportunities are at. However, you know, depending on certain alignments with these squares and, and um, oppositions and with the chines and sextiles is what makes it either positive or negative. So an astrologer will tell you this aspect is positive. This aspect is negative. But if you have two planets that don't like each other in a sextile or trine, then this could be a gift or opportunity for negative shit, depending on how you use it. All right. So that's another important thing to understand. But when we're talking about the moon in Leo... When we talk about the moon and Leo, Leo's naturally squaring all the other fixed signs. So this is another important uh, important reason to understand why um, you need to know where the moon is at because the moon sign, the moon sign squares. I mean, if you are a Taurus, Scorpio, or Aquarius, you know the moon is in Leo. So you know for the next two and a half days, the moon is going to be hitting you at a more so negative angle at more so of a learning process angle, all right? So when you wake up out the bed and you like, damn, you, you, you feeling the vibe and you feel like you just, you just woke up on the wrong side of the bed, most likely you have the moon probably angling you at a certain, um, in a certain way that's more so gonna represent a learning process or a challenge or basically something you're gonna have to learn within the next two and a half days. So that's very important to understand, all right? And that goes for if the moon is in Cancer, then you know, uh, the rest of the cardinal signs have to watch out, okay? If the moon is in a uh, mutable sign, the rest of the mutable signs got to watch out. So it's very important to know where the moon transits, okay? But right now with Leo, to the energy, if you guys notice today, like, there's a, there's been a lot of people on live tonight, but tonight is just a whole lot of people. The Leo energy, all right? So people are being forced to react and respond to putting themselves on stage, putting their actions in there, uh, the things they want to take initiative, aka Aries energy, they want to put that on stage, all right? Now, this is an opportunity, all right? Air, Aries and Leo trying each other, so it's the same element. So as far as we're talking about seeing, feeling, your expression, creative expression, your personality, these are the things that are going to be put on the stage or you're going to be forced to react and respond and put something that's dealing to your personal issues, your personality, um, the things you're creatively into on the stage to broadcast it, to show people your fixed way of being uh, creative or whatnot, all right? So this is what we got to look at with the moon in Leo, okay? So like I said, when the moon moves into Libra, all right, once it gets into Virgo, then it moves into Libra, it's going to be a full moon. When it gets to a full moon in Libra, we got to see what we want to release and detach from on this journey that we just had when we were in the new moon, uh, uh, like sometime last week. When the new moon came in in Aries and we were setting new intentions and whatnot, and we were we were looking for new energies to come into our life, when it got into the full moon, this is like the halfway journey on the trip where we're like, okay, we went through the whole, we went through the um, personal part of the journey because the first, through the seven signs, the first, the, the first six signs in the zodiac represent the signs in the houses that are dealing with the self. When we get into Libra and the, the, the 7 through the 12 signs, this signs is more, these signs the houses are more so dealing with reacting to the external realm, all right? So um, when the moon gets into Libra, this is like the halfway trip on the journey where we see, all right, we look at everything we accumulated from the new moon in Aries and we see what we want to continue to bring on our journey and what we need to release and detach that we don't need. But this is why when the moon is transiting through these different signs, if you're acting on these energies, you'll be able to see what's accumulated from um, everything you've been doing when it gets to the full moon. So right now, this stage, we're creatively seeing how shit look, all right? Because we set the intention in a fire house. 
in a fire sign. So when we get back to Leo, now we're now we're throwing we're back to putting light on that intention. This is the second stage though, because Aries is the first fire sign. So when it gets to Leo, now we're seeing how to we're actually broadcasting it for the first time. We're showing people how this excuse me. We're showing people how these new actions and these new ideas or whatnot look for the first time. All right, we're creatively broadcasting ourselves. All right. We get into Virgo, we tweak these things. We're seeing the details of seeing. We're seeing what practically works or whatnot. We're learning from how others do things. Then we get into Libra. We're learning how to be. We're gonna. We're, we're being. Rea we're being forced to react and respond. How to be relatable with others. All right, on a one-on-one -on -one level. And then from there, we're also gonna be seeing what we need to detach from. And then we're gonna finish our book. And then there's gonna be a new moon in Taurus. All right, and that's gonna be like the middle of this month. So. You know, right now, you guys want to, you know, put some of yourself out there. It's been, the whole airy season is more so dealing with taking initiative, all right, and focusing more so on your personal issues, all right? But every time the moon moves into a new sign, this is a different stage, and you got to modify how you're doing this Aries energy, okay? And um, besides that, there's planetary uh, uh, angles I want to get into, but I think I'm just going to do a separate video for that because I also want to do how this month is going to affect all zodiac signs, but I know I'm just going to do a, a YouTube video for that. So since we're still early in the month, I'm going to go ahead and knock that out and um, upload that tomorrow. But I just wanted to get out that with the moon signs and um, the moon going to Leo, what energies to expect and whatnot, and how you ride the vibration more to manifest and reel in some of your personal goals or whatnot by reacting to that Leo energy putting some creative expression out there, responding to some form of entertainment or how you like to be entertained and using that to, you know, creatively stimulate your imagination to work on what you're doing, all right? And also diving into fun activities. When we talk about Leo the Fifth House, we're talking about fun. We're talking about youthful, childlike energy, all right? So whenever you're diving in, when the moon is transiting through Leo, you know, it's great times to get into fun things, sociable things, things that you like to do when it's, you know, for your leisure or whatnot, all right? But besides that, we could get into a quick Q&A and then I'm going to wrap it up, guys. What about a Virgo with the Libra moon? Also, how does the new moon moving into a new sign as chapters determine our journey with our particular signs that we're born with? All right. So, well, first, as with a Virgo, with a Virgo sun, Libra moon, your moon sign, the, the, the person you truly are and how you react and respond to the world deals with creating balance. All right. You're, you're constantly looking in your life to see where what's unbalanced and how you could get things in order, all right? Libra is um, cardinal air, so it's creating communication and logic. So as a, as a Libra moon, you feel like relating to others. You feel like you need to throw out a topic for others to think about and be relatable and uh, logical about, all right? You feel like you need to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with people around you, so you could be... If you're on a basketball team or if you're looking at your family or your classmates, it's like as a Libra moon, you could all be in group settings. But while you're in this group setting, you feel like you need to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with everybody in there. Most Libras are like that. Most Libras is like when you're dealing with Libra sun, moon rising, it's like these type of people could... You can see how they interact in a room full of a bunch of people and then find out that they were actually way closer or cooler with some of the people in that room, but you didn't even know. That's because Libra, Libras be having their own one-on-one -on -one relationship with people, but they could get into the neutral energy when they're in a environment with a lot of people, all right? So this is how you feel, all right? Now with a Virgo sun, the sun is how the moon looks. So... So, so with the sun, um, when you have Virgo and the sun, your actions, you, you feel like being relatable and all that with the Libra moon, but you push it out in a real, a real detailed, practical way. All right. You like to communicate, but then you also like to watch how other people com have communication methods are. And you like to see how other people go about their one-on-one -on -one relationships in your life to get ideas on how you got to correlate one-on-one uh, -on -one relationships in your life. Because Virgo is mutable earth, so it likes to see how other people work on things so it could uh, get some research and build some information on how it's going to work on something. All right. So this is how you push out that Libra energy. So you, a lot of the time, you're, you're, you're in your one-on-one -on -one relationships with the people you're you care about you criticize them and you're trying to see which how, how what you could 
give them advice in their life on a practical level as far as details on the business plan they're about to start, how to practically handle a situation in their relationship, how to practically handle, uh, you know, uh, all type of different situations in their life. You feel me? Virgos are, are like some of the biggest helpers in the Zodiac, all right? And you guys know how to find information, all right? Now, you guys need to learn and start tapping more so into your imagination and learn from your opposite sign, Pisces. But as far as being practical, you guys know how to dig up some research. If a Virgo don't know it, it's going to find out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to do what it got to do to find some information about it. So that's how the two energies correlate. And then with that last question, I believe I kind of answered that while I was um, talking about the new moon. But to go in more in depth, you know, when the moon, when the moon is going through the signs that's going through, this is the energy that is showing us what's how to, what to react and respond to. But at the same time, you, we all, like you said, we all personally have our own um, energies. So when the moon is transiting through a certain sign. Like right now, the moon is in um, Leo. Now, in my birth chart, I got Leo in my seventh house. Every, for everybody else, that may be different. Not everybody has Leo in the seventh house. Not everybody has Leo in, a, in, a, in um, you know, we have Leos. Everybody has different house placements. So that's how you go more in depth to see what area of life the moon energy will be hitting you when you see what house is transiting. So everybody needs to check their natal chart and see what house they have Leo in so they know this is the area of life that they need to dot, react, and respond to creative creative expression and fun things and entertainment within these next two and a half days. Gems. I love you, man. You're just so good. I love you too, Pre Pre. How will a moon in Leo react with a Virgo sun and a Libra moon? Well, so the moon in Leo... It's sextile in your son. So right now, when it comes to your actions, all right, when it comes to your actions, this is a gift. So right now, you have the gift for your actions to be, uh, you know, displayed in more uh, a more harmonious way. All right, you have the gift of communicating your creativity. You have the gift of of you know finding balance within how you like to be entertained and have fun right now within these next two and a half days. And uh, Leo doesn't really angle Virgo because it's right next to it. But that's basically the energy that you're going to be influenced by as far as your sun sign. Okay, so I have a Cancer rising and a moon in Gemini. I have a Cancer rising, moon in Gemini, located in the 12th house, sun in Libra. It's hard to get it out, out, out the mud and express it to others in this dimension. Okay, so you said rising Cancer, moon in Gemini. Sun and Libra. So when it comes to your sun and your moon, you're very communicative and you're dealing with you're dealing with logic. You're dealing with logic two four seven. You ain't you don't be in your feelings for real. Um you don't even like dealing with the feelings. You you actually you actually yeah Gemini moons be thinking yeah yeah um thoughts are feelings and they be thoughts. It's hard to get out the money and express it to others in this dimension. Yeah, man. A lot of us uh feel spiritually alone and whatnot in this dimension. So that's why like things like this, building this community up, that's why things like this is real important to me. Because I understand when you're on your spiritual journey, everybody else around you is just like, you know, their frequency and whatnot just is hap it just happens to not align with yours. And it starts making you feel a little bit lone, alone and unrelatable and whatnot. But, like, you know, we got to understand there's people like us all over the world. You feel me? So it's, this is really the year about the soul fam and connecting with people on the on your frequency vibration. Yes, and they never understood that when we criticize, we mean good. We aren't being assholes. Right. But it's funny with y'all pre-pre because it's like Virgos will criticize you. Virgos will criticize you when Virgos will criticize you. If they like you and they'll criticize you when they don't fuck with you. So y'all funny for that. Like y'all real, real funny for that. All right. But yeah, guys, I just want to break down, like just go real brief, give a real brief description on go a little bit more in depth on, you know, why the moon sign transits are important and, you know, what to expect with the moon and Leo. You guys probably picked up this energy, picked up the energy of people, you know, trying to creatively express themselves and showing off their fire, pushing out their expression, personal expression within today. All right. And you're going to continue to witness that tomorrow and throughout the weekend. And you will you can subconsciously be diving into that energy, you know, since um, since that's the energy that we're influenced by. All right. So 
you yeah, already know what's, what it is, man. I'm going to go ahead and upload this real quick, guys. Thank you. I agree. I've been meeting my soul family. Right, right. All you got to do is continue to, uh, you know, build the connection with yourself. Build the connection with, um, because when you stay in solitude and you're not relating to that much people and you're giving yourself a chance to be in your own, um, your own space and in your own privacy or whatnot, you know, you start catching influences that are meant for you to catch. It's just, it's hard for us to get certain answers and see certain signs and whatnot when we're like in the world relating too much. But when you get a chance to be to yourself, you'd be uh, surprised by how many answers that you get, you know, just being able to be in your own peace of mind because your spirit is always sending you signs and trying to lead you to the right places. All right. So family, y'all stay safe. Y'all stay prosperous and productive. Make sure to tap into my YouTube account. All right, link in bio. Go ahead and subscribe. All right, and y'all already know, man. Y'all got questions, everything. My DMs are always open, y'all. But stay safe out here, fam. Peace.